Are the Roosters? I would say another tough team to predict. Do you I think, think I think they'll slide. They won't be in the top four, but I think against the big teams they'll they'll go. And you see, it's going to be a big test for Trent Robertson, I reckon, because. He, you know, he's meant to be a great coach, but it's pretty easy to be a great coach when you've got a great roster. Um, this year will test him. I mean, they're going to have... It's a miracle! Oh, yeah! Balotelli! Aguero! Hello and welcome back to the On The Ball Podcast. This is episode 108 of the show. Today we are joined by a guest for the first time, I think in 15 episodes or something, but welcome, Dad. Hello. Well, thanks for in- the invite. No worries. Um, if you probably can't tell, we are talking about NRL today. You can probably tell by the title, but also by Dad's presence. I don't think you've been on the podcast since the end of last season. I think we might have done a review or something, but who knows. Uh, so today, what we're going to be doing, it's on the eve of the finals. We're going to the opener on Thursday, the Rabbitohs versus the Storm. And we are filming this on Monday, so very close to it. Are you excited, Dad? Yeah, well, do you know that Melbourne, have under Craig Bellamy, has never lost a first game? And Souths have never beaten Melbourne in Melbourne. There you go. Yeah, I think I've been tipping the storm anyway, but yeah, that's not good. Doesn't sound good for the Rabbitohs. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to go through the teams and we're going to talk about where we think they're going to come this year. And we've also got some um, rogue predictions at the end, like who's going to win the Dahlia medal, who's going to get sacked, who's going to win Origins, just stuff like that. So without further ado, I reckon we get into the size and we'll start, we'll go alphabetical order, I reckon, and we'll go with the Brisbane Broncos. Where do you think they'll come this year? Last. I'm in agreement with you there. Why do you think they're going to come last? Oh, they haven't bought anyone so and they've got rid of players, so they're not going to improve. They've got the worst spine in the competition and they've got a coach that's never coached first grade before. So, you know, how does a guy that's never coached first grade lift that team? They have You compare them to the teams down the bottom. Most of the teams down the bottom have either bought players um, or changed... Well, they've changed their rosters, most of the teams at the bottom. So I don't think they're going to be any better. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, their only chance of improvement is young guys stepping up or someone like a Milford finding form again but we've said that for the last three or four years now and he never really has so I think we probably can start to lower our expectations of the Milf but um yeah unless Brody Croft something clicks there but I don't think he's got that in his locker blokes like Tessie New I think their forward pack will be good as it was last the last few years they did lose for feeder and blokes like Offang Gowie but I don't think that's too much of a loss well, for feeder is, but the rest of their forward pack's still good. But yeah, as you said, they're spine and they're creative players. Also, Katoni Staggs, I believe, is out till about round 15 with his ACL that he suffered late last year. So that's probably their best attacking weapon gone. So yeah, I just don't really think it's pretty bleak looking for the Broncos. Once again, they've got a lot of prime time games. So sadly, we're going to have to sit through that for another year, uh, which is frustrating. But obviously, it's because of the Brisbane audience. But that's why you need two teams in Brisbane. Yeah, it does make sense. Well, the Firehawks might be coming in in 2022. But um, that's why. Because if you've got one of them going bad, at least the other one is winning and they won't show one of them. Yeah, exactly. So they came last this year and we're both predicting them to come last again. Uh, we've been reading out some predictions in the paper and not too many people actually have them coming last again. But um, yeah, I just don't really see where the improvement comes from. All right, next, and I'm just going alphabetical order off the top of my head, so it might be a little bit wrong, but... I think we've got the Bulldogs next. Uh, where do you reckon? Last year they came 15th, tied last with the Broncos, but they were ahead on points difference. They have made a lot of big signings this year. They've brought in Kotrick, Corey Allen, Kyle Flanagan. Where do you think the Dogs will come? 11th. 11th? There'll be, there'll be a gradual gradual improvement, um, and then they'll probably next year they'll start moving. But, I, you know, look, they've bought, but they've bought backs mainly. Um they're a long, they were a long way behind everyone else last year, so they've got a long way to go. Trent Barrett, I'm not sure, as a coach. I mean, you shouldn't forget that his last job he got sacked. Yes, yeah, true. So, you know, this, is he good? Don't know. He might be a good assistant coach, but we'll soon find out. But no, I think they'll be better, um, but they still won't be a top eight team. Yeah, I agree with you. I think a lot of their signings were exciting, but I think there's a lot of flop potential for someone like Kyle Flanagan. I think he could easily rock up and 
be like a bit of a Brody Croft for the Broncos. Uh, and then Kotrick, I think he's on 700, 800k for a winger slash centre. I'm not sure that's going to improve the team too much. So at least they've been busy in the market um, in the offseason, but I'm not sure if they've been the smartest buyers. They've also lost guys like Aiden Tolman. So, uh, yeah, I, I think they're going to improve. I've got them in at 12th. I think people saying they might push for the 8. I think that's ridiculous. And, yeah, if anything, 12th and 11th, I would say it might be generous predictions because a lot of the teams around them are improving, like the Tigers, Warriors, and Titans. So, uh, yeah, I don't have the highest hopes for them. I know Junior on Cricket Commentary the other week said they're going to make the 8. But, um, yeah, Bulldogs, uh, yeah, I've got them in at 12th. All right, next up, got the Canberra Raiders, our first top 8 team to tackle from last year. Last year they came 5th, but obviously didn't have a home crowd for any of the season like many teams did but they more importantly didn't have too many games in Canberra so do you think that'll make a difference or do you think they're going to go backwards this year? No I think they'll be top four well, I don't think they'll be premiers but they'll be top four I think they've still got a pretty good team they had a lot of injuries last year so if they don't have injuries they still you know they nearly made the um, well they made the playoff for the grand finals didn't they? Yeah So they weren't too far away Yeah yeah, they really started to hit form late in the season. They started, well, they started well, and then I think in the middle there was a bit of a lull there. Um, Josh Hodgson will be back. He didn't play last year. However, um, my brother thinks that's actually worse for the Raiders, so we'll see if that comes to fruition. John Bateman is gone. That's a pretty big loss. I think last year he definitely wasn't as good as 2019, but uh, still a big loss there. But they've got blokes like Corey Horsburgh, who missed out last year. He is looking to improve. And they've got other young forwards. Who... Oh, isn't he? That's a redhead guy. Yeah. He's suspended, isn't he? Oh, really? Yeah, he's he get... driving. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that happened. He's out. He, I think he's out for a few games. Oh, ah, okay. Well, there we go. But he'll come back with the vengeance. He's a loser, he? Yeah, he hasn't played since that incident, I don't think, where yeah. he flipped off the crowd. So he'll provide a bit of bit of entertainment i'm a big raiders fan i do like the raiders but this year i'm actually going off them i think last year i predicted them to win the premiership but this year i'm picking them because you you know there's always one or two teams out of the top eight who slide i'm saying they're still going to make the eight but i'm saying they're going to put come down to eighth i just think they've had a few good seasons in a row and they're due for maybe an off year not too much is backing up my call here like they haven't really lost too many big players They've brought in a few guys like Ryan James, but I don't know. I just think the other teams around them have strengthened and or have young players looking to improve where I don't know if the Raiders do necessarily. So, uh, yeah, I've got them pushing down to eighth, but I'm not too um, like I'm not too confident on that call, really. I think they're going to be there or thereabouts. I just thought I couldn't basically pick the exact same top four as last year or top six. So, yeah, I've got them in there. Next, with Got the Sharks, I believe they're fourth in the alphabet. Uh, the Sharks last year snuck into the eight ahead of the Titans and the Warriors. They finished eighth. Uh, from memory, they lost first week of finals. But um, where do you think they're going to come this year, the Sharkies? No, t- not the top eight. Yeah, I think they. Um, as well. I mean, they they got a really weird roster. They got an aging roster, then a really young roster. So they got a lot of young players coming through, but then they've got like all their big stars are getting old. Um, John Morris is going to be under a lot of pressure this year. So, I mean, they only got their last... I don't think they beat a top eight team last year at all, did they? No, I don't So they so. snuck into it, and I think that there's a few teams like Gold Coast, the Warriors, that have improved. So I think they'll be under the pump to make the eight. Yeah, I definitely agree. Looking at that, the top eight from last year, they're by far... the like you, you, We know there's usually two that fall out every year. They're comfortably the favourites to be falling out this year. I've got them coming 10th. I don't think they're going to fall too far. They've still got a fairly good side. But yeah, as you said, blokes like Sean Johnson, Fafita, Woods, they're all heading towards the end of their careers. Sean Johnson is free agent next year, so he's arguably playing well, for his out, next and contract. And he's out for the first almost six weeks, isn't he? Right? Yeah, Boy, so, his injury. So. Yeah, and who knows if he'll be the same coming back from that. So yeah, I, I don't have great hopes for the Sharks. I think, as you mentioned, John Morris will be under pressure. I think last year, the way they played, I thought he could have been a contender to get sacked, but then the fact that they just snuck into the eight, I think helped helped him keep his job. But I reckon if they missed the eight last year, he would have got sacked because they were playing crap. So I think this year, if they don't make it, I think he could be one of the coaches under pressure. 
Um, maybe they bring bring, Bly, bring back Flanagan or something. Well, no, there's rumours of Bellamy, but Bellamy won't go to Cronulla. Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's much appeal there. And they also don't have a home stadium this season. I believe they're playing out of the Dragon Stadium again or wherever that is. So, yeah, not I don't, don't see how they're making the eight this year with the guys on the verge of the eight really improving their teams in the off-season. So I think don't think it'll be a rough year for them, but I think it'll definitely be a slide year for them. Uh, in it... Fifth in the alphabet, I think we've got the Titans. Just missed out on the eight last year. Probably the most exciting team heading into this season. No one really knows what we're going to get. Some people have been outlandish and said top four. Others think they're not going to make the eight again. But last year they were knocking on the eight. Two points out of it. I've got them coming in at seventh. I've Looking at the teams outside of the eight, I think they have the best chance of moving in. I just think teams like the Tigers, the Bulldogs, I don't think they're ready yet. I think the Warriors, like what they did last year was awesome. They've strengthened their team, but I just think a second year in Australia is going to be really taxing for them, and I'm not sure if they can quite replicate what they did last year. So I think they're definitely the favourites to push into my eight. Do you think they're going to make the eight? Yeah. Well, they should, you know, they won the last five games of the year last year, and they've strengthened the off-season. Yeah. So I think they will make the eight, and I think you've got... There's still this issue with, will Cam Smith turn up? Do you reckon he's going to go to the Titans? I don't know. If he's going to play, that's where he's going to play. So if he plays, that'll put them definitely in the eights. But I, I still think that they, with the forwards they've got now, they've got the best, well, the argument is they've got the best forward pack in the competition. Yeah, it's certainly up there. I think Fafita's obviously a great signing, but I do think Tino Fasul-Malawi has been not talked about enough. I think that's an incredible signing. I still don't, talked about it in the last podcast, I don't really know why Melbourne let him go. They usually let go of the expendable players. And I think he's a lot better than that. So I think he's going to be an absolute star for the Titans. And they did lose a few big names, but they were kind of just um, dead weight by the end of their careers. So, well, it's a bit stiff on blokes like Ryan James. But um, I think they're moving in the right direction. And the next step is the top eight. And I think they're going to do it. They've got a good coach in Holbrook and they've got a pretty good side. I think a lot will come down to the halves because they really overperformed what we would expect from them last year. So it's a matter of whether they can do that again. But I think Cam Smith would be a great addition because I think that would take a lot of pressure off Ash Taylor and Fogarty. And looking forward to seeing what Brimson can produce. I think he might really you know, push for Origin this year because uh, he's an absolute star when he was at the end of last year. Uh, next up in the alphabet, geez, this is just in my alphabet knowledge here. I reckon it's Manly. I think Manly's sixth in the alphabet from memory. Uh, they're, they're a tough team to predict, I'd say. Some people have been putting in the top eight, if I'm not wrong. Uh, last year, they came 13th. Turbo missed most of the year. They brought in Kieran Foran, but we're not even sure if he'll play because Schuster might start at 5 8 So um, there's question marks there. Do you think Manly will make the eight this year? No. They'll, be, they'll finish ninth. Yeah, I've got them there as well. Just... It depends on Tommy T. If he plays... They're a better team. If he doesn't, they won't make it. They've got... I mean, their spine's pretty... Like, Cherubin's hit and miss. Foran's injury prone. If Tommy doesn't play, they don't have a fullback. I mean, the hooker's... Isn't he arrested for stabbing someone or something? Yeah, I don't know what's happening with him. I don't know if he's playing this year. <laughs> well, Dylan but... Walker's meant to be a hooker. That's what they were saying today. Oh, no, that's um, And then there was a, one of those plots of data the other day in... The other Turbo, um, Turbo. He um, they showed his data and he's actually not that good a player. Without yeah. his brother, without his brother, he's not that good because his brother runs off him. So no, I think they're not a top eight team. Yeah, not to claim I'm some expert, but I'm actually not the biggest fan of Jake Trevoy, which I think he's a brilliant tackler, but I think what he does in offense is kind of a bit useless. Like I'm not a big fan of a ball playing lock. I much prefer someone who's basically just a third prop, like a Tamalolo personally. Plus, you don't know what they're like. I mean, Trent Barrett's last year, didn't they finish last or second last? And then yeah. Hasler comes in, gets into top five. So maybe that was And last the year they bombed out. So you go, well, which is the anomaly? The, the year that Hasler or last year? I reckon they're, they're not a top eight team. Yeah, it's a tough one. I think they will be one of the teams who benefit from crowds coming back. I think the Brookie crowd can be quite hostile at times. So I think that'll benefit them. But yeah, I'm not... I think they'll improve. Can't see them finishing 13th again, but yeah, I've got them in at 9th. I just can't see them pushing in ahead of top teams like the Knights or the Eels. So yeah, I think they're still missing out, but I'll put them in 9th. Uh, next up, 
I think it's the Storm. Where do you have the Storm this year? Obviously, top two. We always say they're going to fall, but it's not going to happen. Let's they, be honest. They're too strong. I mean, you, you know, you lose Smith, you got Grant, you lose, you know, you lose with Slade, you bring in Pappenhouse. They're just too strong. Bellamy's last year's coach, so they've got a big thing to prove. Um, they want to prove that they can win without Cam Smith. Um, they're just such a well-coached team. It doesn't matter what you do with them, so they'll be top two. I don't I don't think they'll win. Um, the grand they, final? No, I don't the think they'll win the premiership, so I think they'll... Yeah. But they're definitely a top two side. And then, you know, crowds back at Melbourne. Melbourne teams don't like coming to Melbourne because they can't... The ball's greasier. They can't throw the ball around. It's just, you've got to play a different style of football when you come to Melbourne, and teams don't like it. Yeah, I've got them winning the minor premiership, but I, I'll get we'll get to it at the end who we think will win the grand final. But yeah, I agree with you. I think there's teams with a bit more firepower on the day that could upset them in finals. But yeah, with the other teams in the top six, there's question marks about the sides, but I think the Storm's probably the one team where we know what we're going to get. So that's the reason I put them in first because, you know, old reliable, you know you're going to be up there. So yeah, I've got them in at first. All right, next up, we've got the Newcastle Knights. I know you're not the biggest fan of the Knights. Last year, they came seventh, um, were kind of just stuck in between the top five and the rest of the teams, along with South. So do you reckon they're going to make the jump this year or going to slide back to the pack? No, they're out. They're out of the eight. Because, I mean, their last six weeks last year was absolute rubbish. They were getting thrashed. They weren't just losing. They were getting thrashed. Pierce is old. Um... Ponga, I don't know about Ponga, he's hit and miss, he's not, like when he wants to play he's really good, um, no I think they're gone, I don't really rate them as a team, I think they over excelled last year, they were found out, I mean South just destroyed them in the finals, so no, nah, rubbish. I'm sticking with them, I'm putting them in a similar position just because apart from the Titans, I don't think the other teams outside the eight have enough like to be a consistent side to make that eight so i'm going to keep them in there but i do know that usually the two teams drop out and apart from the sharks they would be the other team most likely to so um, i've got them finishing in sixth which is a bit of a shock but i tried to be bold with my raiders call but i can't really see the raiders finishing below the knights but i'll stick with it uh, i just think I, I trust o'brien as a coach um to make to win enough games really for them to be in the eight they've got enough firepower in the likes of, you know, Caelan Ponger and the uh, the Saifidi boys and Clemmer. So I think they'll be able to beat the bad teams. Yes, I think on their day they can beat the best, but we didn't see that too often last year. So I'm going to say they're going to make the top eight, but I'm not too bullish about that call. Um, we'll have to wait and well, see. Come so. six. Yeah, but I just don't... <laughs> apart from the Titans, I just don't see any of those other teams. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Manly... I think the Warriors, them being in Australia again, is going to hurt them. And I think the Tigers, I think, not 2021, I think 2022 or 2023 will be the Tigers year to break the drought. And then the other teams, I think, are shit. So, um, yeah, it's a tough one, but I'm going to keep them in my eight. Uh, next up, North Queensland. Uh, this is another team probably in contention for the Wooden Spoon. Uh, they needed to make signings, and they didn't make any signings. Um, so they're basically just relying on guys like Drinkwater and Graham, uh, not Granville, um, the halfback, I've forgotten his bloody name, but uh, they're just relying on blokes like that um, to just produce stuff that I don't think they're capable of just yet. So, um, yeah, where do you reckon the Cowboys are going to come? Where they finished last year, 14th. Yeah. I don't like you. I mean, they got a new coach, Peyton. You know, he's meant to be a good coach, so he'll probably get some improvement out of them, but they just don't have the team. Their spine is non-existent yeah um you know you got valentine holmes i suppose you might yeah Cl- clifford to us i'm oh, sorry and they've got the young speedster out wide but i don't think he's still very young but yeah a lot's going to come down to Holmes and drink water and i just as you said that spine similar to the broncos i just think that you can have a good forward pack and all but if your spine's one of the worst in the comp i think it definitely caps your ceiling as a team and I can't see them finishing above like 13th so I've got them in at 15th I just think the other teams have made better signings and look on look like they're going to start progressing and unless Todd Payton works miracles and turns Drinkwater into a origin type player they I can't think, tackle 
yeah, exactly, is like Benji Marshall in defence. So I don't see where the improvement comes with the Cowboys. I just don't see it at all, really. Um, so next up, we'll go the Warriors. I know alphabetically some people put them second last, but it is New Zealand. So well, I think they'll finish about the same, 10th. Um, I mean, they're a work in progress. I think the Phil Gould... I'm not sure about Nathan Brown's coach. I think he's overrated. But to have Phil Gould in the organisation, I mean, I reckon eventually the Warriors are going to become the team that everyone thought they would be, like a powerhouse. So once they start tapping that junior market... But then you, people forget with the Warriors is they're up against all the rugby teams in New Zealand. So, you know, the players that play league are you're probably six, seventh string players. Yeah. So they're never going to be... Maybe they'll never be good. But no, I think... They'll, they'll be there thereabouts, as you said before, not playing at home. Um, I don't think they'll, you know... They're too hit and miss, the Warriors. Yeah, I think, similar to last year, I think on their day they might be able to upset some of the top eight sides, but I just don't think they're going to be consistent enough to make the top eight. And, yes, Harris, Tavita and Nicarima showed signs last year, but I just don't know if they're going to be able to do it again. They might... You know, some spiritual kind of stuff with Roger in his last year, but I don't think they're going to make the top eight, sadly, for RTS. And I've got them coming 13th. I've got them dropping purely just because I don't think they can back up last year's efforts in the bubble in Australia. I just think that's too much to ask of a young group of players. Yes, they've made some exciting signings. I think they've now got Fanua Blake, who I believe is one of the best props in the competition. But yeah, I just think... The spine's not necessarily good enough, and I just don't think they're going to be consistent enough. But excited to see how Fanua Blake fits in, and also the progression of Ellie Katoa. I think he's going to turn into one of the better back rowers in the competition. Uh, next up, we've got the Peas. Start with Parramatta. Um, not really a fan of either of the teams starting with P, but Parramatta last year finished third, 30 points from 20 games. Pretty good return. Where Do you think they're going up or down this year? Uh, down, they'll be in the eight, sniffing around spots six, between five and six. I just don't, again, I don't think they've got the spine. I think they've got, no, they've got dumb backs. That's their problem. Their forwards are pretty good, but you take their full back out, the rest, the rest of it's pretty crap. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think they've got the jump up in them. So they're, you know, they're, they're you know, they'll be there a bit bouts, but they won't be as good as this year. Um, and they're, they're half slipping down all the time so you know I don't think they'll win more games than they'll lose but they won't they won't threaten the premiership yeah I think they'll be able to comfortably put away the bad teams but I just don't know if they've got what it takes to match it with the likes of Melbourne Sydney Penrith South I well, just they got think... flogged in the finals last year yeah I mean they, but the two games they played they got absolutely destroyed yeah and they've got a bit of a history of getting flogged against some of the better teams like in 2019 Magic Round Melbourne Storm put about 60 on them so uh, yeah they do tend to do that against some of the bigger sides they're a bit of a flat track bully team hopefully they can perform well because there are some blockbusters scheduled for Bank West or or Easter Monday scheduled for um, ANZ or whatever they call it now. So, uh, yeah, hopefully they're all right. But, yeah, I just don't think Moses... I think Moses is the only way they go to the next step, but I don't think Moses is going to take that step, to be honest. And Dill Brown, yeah, he's probably going to keep improving, but I just don't think he's going to be able to do what needs to be done for them to become a premiership contender. So, yeah, I've got them in at fifth. Penrith... Another um, hard team to predict, I'd say. Top four, but probably third. Um, they won't do as well as this year. I mean, they, like last year, sorry. I mean, to lose only two games, that's crazy. So that won't happen again. Um, they've got a few issues, Penrith. They've, they're a young team. So the danger with young teams is they just think they turn up again this year and it all happens for them. Um, so you'll know after the first month if they're not if they're not on their game, and then the problem is then it's really hard to get back. Um, they've lost players, like they've lost Mansour and Talmo. That has an impact on these teams. You know, they lose, and then they've lost fringe players, so they're not as strong. Um, so, you know, I, I think, I don't think they'll win the premiership, um, but they'll be, they'll be up there again. But they could be, there could be a shock. They could be a team that really just drops right out of the eight because they just don't perform. I've seen it before where young teams go really well 
next year they just think, ah, it'll be easy as again, and they get flogged, and then before you know it, after the first six weeks of competition, they're in trouble. Well, Parramatta did that. Yeah. And they finished top four, and then next year they finished last or second last. So, um, yeah, that could happen this year to the Penrith. I think they're going to come fourth. Completely agree with what you said. I think what made them so good last year was their depth. I think they had one of the best benches in the competition, and every time there was an injury, there seemed to be someone come in, like a Staines or Brent Naden, they would seem to do just as good a job, if not better. But this year, as you said, a lot of the teams have come in and picked apart their squad. They've lost blokes like Ted Ivano as well, who made their bench so good, and I think that will definitely have a negative impact on the side. And unless it, they have some young forwards who take a big step, I just don't think they're going to have that bench impact like they did last year. Definitely think, similar to the Eels, they're going to be able to comfortably put away some of the lower-ranked teams in a week-in, week week-out basis. But, yeah, losing two games, that was pretty freakish. So I don't think they'll do that again. I don't think they'll be as consistent as teams like the Storm and the Roosters. So, yeah, I've got them finishing fourth, but... Excited to see how they go and excited for them to visit Leichhardt because um, Cleary needs to... <laughs> I'm excited to see what happens there, really. Um, all right, next up, we've got Souths. Souths, everyone's pretty hot on Souths this year. They finished sixth last year. They were just a little bit outside that top five, but they got really hot for finals, almost made it, and this year everyone just thinks they're going to go strength to strength. They've got Latrell back from injury. Are you as confident about South being a premiership contender as others or do you have your doubts no no I think they'll finish first um they're a stronger team because Latrell Mitchell will be his fit whereas last year when he started he wasn't fit and he was getting used to fullback and he just got into form just as they got injured but they were still winning without him um and then you've got Jai Arrow joining the team so they've actually got stronger in the off season um and I just think that they'll yeah, I don't. Th- I, th- I think when you look at the top five teams or top six teams, they're the teams that's probably to me at the end of last year was improving the most. You know, the Storm were moving, and so were so were South. Penrith was starting to sort of stagnate a bit towards the end. Um, so they they look good to me. South's a really well managed team. You know, they're a pretty impressive squad. So yeah, I, they're my number one side for this year. Yeah, I think most of the other top four, top six teams from last year lost a bit of depth, which tends to happen with the good sides. But I think they're one of the few teams that didn't really... Like, they've lost Bailey Siren and uh, Josh Mansour. The Tigers picked up Tom and Moan, but he was injured for most of last year. But apart from that, I think they're... They've got Benji. Yeah, they've got Benji. Benji. He's going to tear up the New South Wales Cup. But um, I wonder, I wonder if he'll be able to defend in the New South Wales Cup. <laughs> uh, but yeah they've got that many outside backs it's silly they did lose Jimmy the Jet to the Tigers but they brought in Josh Mansour Braden Burns will be back from injury so I don't even know what they're going to do there but they've got so many good players they've got so much strike power um, I just can't see a world where they don't finish top four this year I've been pretty critical of the Rabbitohs in the past I've never really liked their forward pack but now they've got Chloe Matangi who I think is going to turn into one of the competition's best forwards this year and they've got other reliable guys like Burgess and Totola so I think they're definitely going to be top four and I've actually got them coming second behind the storm uh St George a last. team down at the bottom yeah. or you've gone last or no nah, Broncos are last they're down right. the bottom they they're rubbish um I mean they bought Anthony Griffith you know they haven't bought any play again these are one of these teams that have just changed the coach and not the squad um the team the coach is not going to I mean, he's been brought, brought in to tighten up their defence, and their defence against South in the trial the other week was dreadful. Um, Corey Norman's rubbish, Ben Hunt's rubbish. Um, yeah, I just don't get it. I mean, they've got Lomax is about the only player on that team that you think is a good player. The rest of it, yeah, they're just making up the numbers, Saints. Yeah, they've lost a lot of players as well. They've lost Corbin Sims, they've lost Jacob Post, they've lost Tyson Frizzell. I think the only hope for them is that Jaden Sullivan turns out to be a young, exciting half who tears up the competition, but that's a lot to ask in his first year. Yeah, I just think for the Dragons right now, they've it's a bit like the Bulldogs a few years ago. They've just their cap situation's just too bad that they've just basically got to write off a few years because they've got almost two million dollars sitting in Ben Hunt and Corey Norman. I don't think any team can be built 
well with that. So, yes, Dufty and Lomax did quite well last year, but I'm not sure how much better they can be because they were playing that well. I'm not sure if that was their ceiling. And if it was, that's pretty worrying for the Dragons because they were um, in a 12th last year, but were arguably one of the worst teams most weeks. So, yeah, I'm not too excited for the Dragons. I've got them coming in at 14th. I think they are a little bit better. They have more firepower than the two Queensland teams in the Cowboys and the Broncos, but... Yeah, they're just pretty bad, really. Not much to say about them. Are uh, the Roosters? I'd say another tough team to predict. Do you I think, think? I think they'll slide. They won't be in the top four. Um, they've they've got an aging roster. I yeah, and they've got like first of all, you don't have quarter Cordner is coming back. Um, Kiri's only one head knock as well. He, you know, they've got two players. Like he may not come back, and then if Kiri gets another smack in the head, then he's gone. He'll be out for a long mm, period of time. Plus, I thought last year Kiri's. He was found out, like, his defence, you know, remember that game against Can- Canberra where they went straight through him to score, um, and then the, he got dropped from State of Origin after the first game because Queensland did the same to him. So, you know, you've got Hargraves, you've got Friend, the Morris brothers, they're all old players. Um, you know, and I, th- I thought last year that they actually started playing really bad Roosters in the finals. So I think the teams have gone around them. I think there's enough... There's enough, obviously, with Tedesco and all that, there's enough talent in the team that they can win and they'll beat all the bottom sides. But I think against the big teams, they'll they'll go missing. It's going to be a big test for Trent Robertson, I reckon, because he, you know, he's meant to be a great coach, but it's pretty easy to be a great coach when you've got a great roster. Um, this year will test him. I mean, they're going to host, have to host players out, Roosters, at the end of this year. Yeah, that's to true. To really change their roster, otherwise they will start dropping. Yeah, I think... I'm a little bit more positive when it comes to the Roosters, which is a rare thing for me to say. Um, not very positive at <laughs> the best of times. But, yeah, I've got them coming third. I just think last year they had that many injuries. I don't think that can physically happen again this year. They At one point, they had eight starters out of their team. Um, we've got Radley coming back. Verrill's coming back. I think Verrill's will make a big difference because I think Jake Friend was pretty bad. And then other weeks, they were just putting who knows at hooker. So... I think Suwali, I don't think he's going to add too much to the team, but he's going to be someone worth watching um, for the Roosters. I think blokes like Billy Smith as well will come into the outside backs and add a little bit more youth. But, yeah, I just think Kiri... Well, I'm hoping Kiri will get back to his best because last year he was definitely off the pace, except for that like little period after lockdown where they came out really hot. So I'm a little bit more positive on them. I think this will be, as you said, they're going to start, have to start releasing some of their talent that has won them so many premierships in the last three or four years. But I think this is going to be one of their last cracks as a unit. So I think they're going to have a really um, red-hot go at it. And I think Radley and Verrills are the big ones for me, them coming back from injury. So I've got them coming in at third. But I do think the Storm and the Rabbitohs will be ahead of them by a little bit. So, yeah. And then to finish off, I think we've done every team, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we're going to finish with our own side, the Tigers. Uh, They're probably one of the teams with the biggest range in terms of where people are predicting them. I've seen a few people say Wooden Spoon. We've seen a few people say 7th or 8th. We've seen Peter Vellandi say Premiership. Uh, Where do you think they're going to come? I think 8th. I mean, if you look at the the teams outside the 8th last year, they've had the bigger roster. They they released, what was it, 10 players? Um, And they've brought in, so it means they've brought in 10 players. So it's a completely different team. Like, they're... You know, they, when you look at the back line, the forwards, it's got almost nothing in common with the team that's been running around, which they've had to do. Um, so I think they will get there this year, just sneak in. Um, and as you said before, they're a team rebuilding, and it's about time. But they they do look the goods. I mean, they, for once, they've got size. I mean, the problem with the Tigers has always been they, they're too small, but they've got a big forward pack. And then the other thing is, with Marshall out of the team now, they'll stop running sideways because that was their other killer, was they always go sideways. So they'll finally start playing straight, which would, what, that's the way Maguire wants them to play. And they'll be... And against Penrith the other week, they were fast. Like, they were really fast. And they've never had speed either. So... Yeah, I think I'm a little bit more uh, cynical with the Tigers. Uh, very cynical supporter. But I've got them in 11th. They came 11th last year, so I don't... I'm not putting them in the same spot because I think they haven't made improvements. But I just think the spine is going to hold them back this year. 
I think in the next few years, it's going to be a perfect launching pad. And we might look back at this year and say, thank God they, you know, sacrificed a little bit this year. And that's maybe built a dynasty well, hopefully. But I just think a spine of Dewey, Brooks, Little, I think that's too much to ask of them to make the Tigers a top eight team. I think Dane Laurie is going to be a gun. I think Dewey will do very well at 5'8", but yet I just think Brooks and Little aren't going to be good enough to make the Tigers a top eight team. I think the only way we get there is if uh, Brooks gets to his best form of his career, really, and turns into a borderline origin player, which I just don't think I've seen enough of in the last two years to suggest that could happen. But I'm really excited to see the outside backs. Um, We've rarely had good outside backs in the last 10 years. I think the last time we had good outside backs was back in like 2012 when we used to have like Takiri and uh, Bo Ryan and, and stuff Lawrence, like that. And Lawrence was young. Yeah, and Tuiaki. Um, but uh, yeah, now we've got really exciting backs with Leilua, Roberts, Nofaluma. So excited to see how that goes. We've got young forwards uh, and that's always exciting. Blokes like Michaeli, I think, are going to come on leaps and bounds this year. And yeah, I think it's a really exciting team. I think we're going to get some big scalps, but I also think in Tigers fashion, we will lose a few stinkers. So I just don't think we'll have the consistency to make the top eight, but I wouldn't want to come up against the Tigers, especially on a Sunday Arvo at Leichhardt or something like that, because I think we would have, with the speed we've got and the youth and firepower we have, I think we'll be able to pull off a few big upsets. So uh, yeah, excited to see how the Tigers go, but I've just got them missing out of the eight. All right, first coach to be sacked. Who are you going with here? Uh, it'd be Brad Arthur or John Morris because if you look at all the teams outside the eight, five of them changed their coaches last year, so none of those coaches will get sacked this year. Yep. Yours, yours get two years. Maguire's just extended his contract. Hasler Manley wouldn't touch him. Um, so I don't think that any... And Titans, who were the other team outside the eight, the, their coaches are relatively new and they're going forward, so... Um, Morris already in the paper that he's under threat, but I think Arthur. If if Parramatta can't jump that gap, um, he'll be a late sacking. He, he won't yeah, get like first. first. Yeah, be the end of the year that he gets moved on. Whereas Morris could get sacked. You know, if the Sharks yeah. start falling, because the problem is that because this stupid rugby league system where you sign a contract so far out, they've got to know who the coach is next year. And so if Morris is not going to be the coach, they'll move fast. Like they'll get rid of him fast. So I expect that he'll he'll go. Um, and then at the end of the year, I think if the Eels don't perform or they don't get into the grand final, Arthur will go. Yeah, I completely agree. For me, it's John Morris. I think, I don't know what their fixtures like, but they were very slow out of the blocks last year. And I think they might do similar this year. And then all of a sudden, Johnson's a free agent next year so like you said they're going to want to bring in the coach for next year because then they've got they're going to have 800 900k whatever sean johnson's on to spend for the team moving forward so i think they're not going to want to have him around too long because i don't think he's the future of the sharks sadly um because i do like him he's a good boy but um yeah i just reckon he'll go i don't think he showed many signs last year i think they were very lucky to make the eight i think most weeks they played pretty shit football so yeah i'm not too big on john morris Origin, Queensland, Um, New South Wales. It's an interesting one. Well, Bennett's not there. That's a big difference with Bennett was coach last year. Um, It's interesting because Queensland's got all these young players now starting to come up. And New South Wales, you know, as usual, New South Wales promises a lot and never delivers. I think the problem with New South Wales last year, they've got too many players out of position. You know, you got... Yeah, it's like five fullbacks. Yeah, you know, and you've got about five, you know, you know, you've got White and playing in the centres... Yeah, it's just crazy, and I, I'm still not sure about Brad Fittler as a coach. You know, it's, whereas Paul Green's a good coach, so I'll go. I reckon Queensland. If Harry Grant's fit, um, I think Queensland. If if he gets injured, um, a different story. And then the problem for New South Wales, their strong players are all in the same positions, as you, as you said. I mean, Pappenhaus and we well, got Tedesco, so it's not like you've got. Whereas they Queensland didn't have Ponga, um, so. I think Queensland will get stronger, and it all it all depends on Harry Grant. If he has a really good year, I think Queensland will do it again. I'm going to go New South Wales. Very biased from me, but I just don't think Munster... I think the only reason they won last year was Cameron Munster put up the best individual performance I've ever seen in an NRL match in Game 3. 
and I he's a gun, so he's going to do stuff like that again, um, hopefully on Thursday night against the Rabbitohs, but I just don't think he's going to be able to will them over the line again. Yes, Ponga will be back, Brimson might be included in the team, uh, but I just think New South Wales are too good not to win. Uh, I just can't see this team losing two series in a row, but hey, it's New South Wales, probably the worst organisation in Australian well, sport. I think that's probably They're badly um, But yes. All right, this one's a bit of a different one this year. The Dallium, they've changed the voting system. Each week, they're going to give the players a rating out of 10. So I don't know if that's going to affect the way you answer this question. It's a tough one to predict, but who do you think will win the Dallium? Munster. Because I think he's the best player in the competition. And I, I like I think what you're going to see this year, which if they if it is the 1-10 to 10 system, the top teams are going to dominate. Because up until now, the top teams, they sort of... Because they've all got good players, the good players go against each other. But if you're a good player, um, they're going to score heaps. So I think the chances of seeing people like Luke Brooks being the halfback of the year, you know, some of the weird things that happens, that's gone now. Um, and the big teams will really dominate. So I think Munster, will, Munster I reckon, or Latrell Mitchell, because um, I reckon he'll have a big year if he stays fit. But I'd go with Munster. Yeah, you absolutely stole my thunder there. I'm going to go a shock. I'm going to go Latrell. I think he's just going to come out and go bonkers. Uh, I'm very excited about this South team. I think Cook, if he can get back to his 2019 form, I think they're almost going to be unstoppable um, if Adam Reynolds keeps playing the way he's been playing the last two years. And then Walker and Latrell will just be able to cut loose off the back of those two. Um, so I think he's my favourite to win it. I know you were suggesting he might get a head knock and he might be done soon, but I think Luke Keery might bounce back this year. I think Teddy will be definitely benefited from this new system because hey, he'll be up like when top. isn't Teddy a nine out of ten? Mm-hmm. Um, I think Turbo is also one of the best players in the comp, but yeah, I'm going to go Latrell, but yeah, all those other guys. Luke, are uh, Nathan Cleary will be up there. The usual suspects, yeah. but I, I just think Munsters will be better. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it sucks that Cam Smith might not play the whole season because I think this um, voting system would have seen Cam Smith win about 10 Dalliams in a row. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to pick him because we don't even know if he's going to be playing. So, uh, grand final winner, always tough to predict because it comes down a lot down to form at the back end of the year. But who do you think is going to do it? You mentioned you're not going to go with the Storm. No, the Rabbitohs. Yeah. I think the Rabbits are... Um... Yeah, I just think they're in that grand final win- window. It's it's Bennett's last year as well. Um, I just think they've got the most improvement. You know, it's interesting when you look at them last year. They, you know, they didn't win a lot of games, but they. I think, I think they are the team. I think the rabbits. Um, they'll win. Um, and I think it's good to see. It's good to see a team like that win. I think it's better for rugby league when you know these teams like Parramatta and South win because they've got huge followings. Whereas if the Roosters and Melbourne win every year, it gets gets a bit dull because they don't and Raiders they don't have big followings in, in Sydney. So I think it's always good to see one of the big traditional clubs come through and win. So it'd be great. Yeah, I'm going to be boring. I'm going to say the Roosters beat the Rabbitohs in the grand final. I think the Rabbitohs will be the hot team coming into it, and I think it'll be a lot of their first grand finals, and I think they might get a little bit overawed, and the Roosters or the old experienced heads will get them over the line. It's always hard not to predict the Storm being there, but first year without Cam Smith, um, just not sure if they're going to have the firepower to match the likes of the Rabbitohs and Roosters. I think they might rely on them having an off day or Munster, having an absolute blinder. Excited to see how Harry Grant goes, though, um, for the Storm, whether that improves their team or whether he just can't fill the shoes of Cam Smith. I think they're going to be a different-looking team, though, this year. It's going to be interesting to see who does the organising because... Munster might have to start do a bit more of that and I'm not sure if that's actually good for his game but yeah excited to see um, yeah, I'm just going to go to the Roosters I think this is kind of their last hurrah as a group as you mentioned Hargraves, Friend, the Morris boys um, from here on they're probably going to be looking to go to the Super League or something so uh, yeah I think this will be their last hurrah Trent Robinson might look to move on in the next few seasons and I reckon this will be their last premiership as a side so Maybe Teddy comes back to the Tigers as well next year. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go to the Roosters, beat the Rabbitohs in a good one. And that's all I've got for you today. Um, any awesome. any other bold predictions you want to make? Well, and I think it's going to be really interesting because the game is going to be different this year because all the new rules. So, you know, it's... Um, 
But then you, the good teams adapt. Like last year, we all went, oh, the Storm won't handle the new rules because you can't wrestle. And after the COVID break, they lost their first game. And everyone went, oh, there you go. And then they just went, they could, pl- well, they didn't change the way they played, but they suddenly let their, they were a lot more free. Yeah. Like Pappenhaus and those guys just went nuts. So it actually suited their, they, they adapted really fast. And I think that's the good coaches adapt. Um, so that'll be interesting. I mean, some teams just won't be able to handle it. I think the problem is the gap between the bottom teams and the good teams will be huge. You know, because the, the, you just can't compete because it's too fast. So, but it'll be fun. Yeah, which team are you most unsure about? Like, they could come first, they could come last. Is there a team that you just are excited to see what they're going to offer because you have no idea what it's going to be? Well, I think the pro. Well, if you look at last year, Penrith came from nowhere. Like, you know, no one would have predicted Penrith at the beginning of the year to be in the grand final. Yeah, I didn't even predict them to make the eight. Um, so. And then the year before, Canberra was a bit like that. Canberra, you know, the, they just did the same. So there's always one team that gets momentum. Um, but the dead, yeah, it might be the Titans. The yeah. Titans could Especially be Especially with Smith. Hmm. I think with Smith, the Titans all of a sudden become a genuine top four contender. I just think he would have such an impact on a young side like that. So I think the Titans are definitely the team to watch. I was thinking the Warriors will be a very interesting watch this year just with Phil Gould coming in. They've brought in four or five good players. I rated them first in terms of who had the best off-season. Uh, they're going to have to be in Australia once again, making Central Coast their home. But, yeah, they're going to be a tough one. Who knows? They could make the eight. They could come last. So excited to see how they go. And also excited to see how the Broncos go because surely the Broncos organisation is not going to put up with another year of coming last. But I'm just... Don't see how they're not going to. Uh, any surprise origin picks? Players? Yeah. That's no, too hard to say. I mean, there's there's so many young players out there right now that, that could come through. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah, nah. yeah that's a fair David point. David <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Um, all right. Thanks for joining me today, no Dad. good. Um, hopefully going to be doing a lot more NRL uh, content this year. I didn't do too much last season, but I'm going to try and stick to the Australian sports a bit more because I know that's mainly my audience. So hopefully going to have you on pretty frequently this season. But, yeah, very excited. Looking forward to Thursday. Yeah, the versus Rabbitohs. Who, who are you going for? Who are you picking? Uh, it's a hard one because, as I said before, Storms never, under Bellamy never lost their first game and Souths never won. But... I was listening, you know, Storm were a bit... Someone pointed out, I was listening to something on my podcast this morning, is that um, Storm looked unfit in the last game, and they reckon one of the issues with the Storm, they had a very short um, off-season because of the uh, state of origin. So there's a feeling that the Storm may not be as fit as what they normally are. Um, and so South could give them a bit of a hard time. So we'll go South. All right, yeah, I'm going goals. for South as well. I'm not sure if they'll win, but I'll definitely be supporting them. You might see me in the borough at some point. Whereas our other son is he's a turning yeah, into Storm. He's got a double soul membership. <laughs> <laughs> There's no evidence of a Tigers one either. But um, yeah. now nah, thanks for joining me. Uh, very much enjoyed today's podcast, and yeah, go the Tigers. Yep. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>